Hello everybody, this is Milat and today in this video I want to talk about something about the difficulty of finding a job a position or applying for a job we as applying for a PhD position I mean I want to talk about which one is basically um, more difficult and well in general it depends on the situation and on the skills experiences you have so that's what I want to talk about so after this video based on the CV you have based on the experiences you have uh, it's easier for you to decide which path you continue because uh, it's been really struggling for me to find the right path for myself because uh, I've been in both industries uh, have worked as a researcher I've been a PhD student I've been a master student uh, have done so many uh, research um, I have a couple of papers actually not that much and those are not that much great but well at least uh, I have experienced a little bit in that area also I have been working as a developer for a while now so I have the experiences and the knowledge a little bit in both areas so that's the reason why I actually wanted to create this video um, and usually I talk about my story first because I believe that uh, before talking about something it's better to know it's better to actually experience that thing yourself before you start talking about that and and uh, you know reading a book and listening to others in one thing and experiencing and feeling something is a completely different thing and so it's really important that when you want to talk about something you feel it you understand it you experience it if you have seen a couple of other videos of mine in in my youtube channel you probably you are a little bit familiar with my story but let me tell you a little bit about my background so i come from a middle east country i've been here in finland for almost more than two years and i started being a phd student for one year and then i switched to be a developer here and i got my master's degree in basically electrical engineering in uh, basically with a major of biomedical engineering and uh, well i continued being a biomedical engineer year as a PhD researcher until I left it and the, the complete story is my is in my channel if you are really interested uh, about uh, that but um, before actually doing this before doing the PhD I was a developer for a couple of years I started with web development and basically with Python and Django and then I continue to be a machine learning engineer and a data scientist in a couple of other companies. So with this background, it was really difficult for me to find both, you know, a PhD position suitable for me and also a job position suitable for me. Because when somebody looks at my CV and my background and experiences I have, the very first thing they say that, wow, it's great. But then when they look closely, they see that, well, I've been a researcher and also I've been a developer and it makes things a little bit difficult because if you are going to apply for a job, they expect you to have, you know, a couple of years experience in that area without, uh, uh, without any gap between those years and those experiences. But my CV was like this that I started with you know uh, I graduated with an electrical engineering degree then I started working as a 
a basic developer then i started my master's degree then after that i started working again as a web developer then as a machine learning engineer then as a data scientist so the experiences i had was really uh, wide it's good to some extent but beyond that if you the cv is is full of you know different experience and skills it's a little bit difficult for them to decide uh, which direction you are going to you know uh, and they see you as a person who can decide on what uh, you want so they look at your CV and say that okay uh, it seems that you're not a good fit for this company because it seems that uh, you're not confident about what you want to do and that's a problem when you want to find a job so if you want to be a developer it's better that your studies you you need to be a com it's better to be a, a basically it's better to have a degree in computer science or software engineering and then it's better to have a couple of trainings on that subject on software engineering and then uh, a couple of years of experience in that area uh, even being a machine learning engineer for a couple of years then switching to be a web developer it's a bit difficult so imagine how it feels when you are a researcher and now uh, you want to switch to be a web developer it's really difficult especially for them to decide even if you have a good skill if you if you have uh, a couple of years experience in that area even so there is the same situation with PhD if you have worked for a couple of years now when you want to apply for a PhD position they look at your CV and say hope oh, okay so you you've been missing for a couple of years from academic area so uh, you've been working and it's good but well uh, it's not really good for you know doing research because they want you to be in the area uh, uh, they want you to think as an academic person they don't want you to be a developer because this, the environment is completely different and you need to have a set of skills related to that area so when you are away for a while from that field from that environment you're going to be a complete somebody else so it's a little challenging for them to decide on this again so with this CV I have it's been always really difficult and challenging for me to uh, find something and the problem I have is that our uh, I'm really interested in all of these areas and fields. I like to be a researcher. I like to work, you know, do um, do a research. I like to write a paper. I'd like to, you know, do experiments, doing this sort of things. And also, I'd like to create things, invent things, uh, build things. As a software engineer, as a web developer. Um, so that's the problem I have always I've been always facing uh, so my suggestion is that first of all please 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 um, find your path for a couple of years try something one thing and then before switching to something else make sure that you tried enough in that area uh, it depends on your age but look at this okay that's fine so now let's talk about the difficulty of finding job well as i told you it depends on the ex experiences and the skills you have but imagine that you have um, the experiences the skills you need for being a web developer uh, finding a job position these days is much easier than finding a PhD position if, even if you have the right skills for each field the, the you know during pandemic it was really difficult 
for both areas. It was really difficult to find a job. It was really difficult for uh, for you know students to find a PhD position. But it was much more difficult, uh, and much it was much worse for you know PhD positions during that time because. Uh, basically if you want to find a PhD position they need to pay you some money and they you need to have a salary and they pay you based on some fundings based on some budget that they um, you know get from some companies or some institutions uh, but uh, when you are a developer when you work for a company well basically get the uh, company can easily pay you the money because you know they have their own clients and they make their own money but it's not the same for a research team they can't just make money no they they doing research so it's not possible for them to make the money and it's really difficult for them and this is the reason why it's really difficult to find PhD positions if you can pay your um, you know pay the bills and if you can actually um, live with your own money and if you don't want to get a salary as a PhD student it's much easier to find a position especially in Canada and USA around Europe it's also easier here in Finland for instance you can uh, free of charge you can attend a PhD program but uh, you need to have you know uh, some kind of other income to cover the expenses you have your daily you know expenses uh, so in general finding PhD is much difficult but it depends on the CV and experiences you have and what else I wanted to tell you not quite sure let me bring my notebook so I have uh, have written down some notes here. Let's see. Uh, it's not really scripted, and that's a problem. Or maybe this is what how I want it to be. I just want to talk with you really friendly, and this is sincerely just my experiences and how I felt things, and I. Uh, uh, how I've been through all of these things so I'm not go gonna create you know some uh, scripted video to just motivate you okay so I think pretty much I talked about everything I wanted to talk about so yeah that's it pretty much so if you want to the, the, my first suggestion, my first advice is that you need to choose one path to go with. But if you want to switch, well, it's a, a little bit difficult at the beginning, but if you try enough, try hard, you can do it. It's possible. The uh, Eventually, after even after getting a PhD, you need to apply for a job. And that's the point. There is no other choice. There are a lot of people that actually after even PhD it's really hard for them to find a job so they start a postdoc and they you know join the academic and they start their career as a professor at a university but it's also really difficult these days um, so that's pretty much um, uh, what I told you just it was my experiences and it was basically what I have heard from my friends around the world uh, I have friends um, in different environments I have PhD friends I have uh, developer friends so it's pretty much like this I hope you enjoyed this video I uh, can't think of anything else and if you have any question please ask me I'll try to answer those questions based on my experience I have and that's all thank you please consider subscribing to my channel if you are a new you know a member viewer
Have a good time. Bye-bye.